guys, how you doing today? And welcome to another episode of JDTV. What? Co. Co. All right. Guys, I got a lot to cover, and I'm going to try to wrap it up in a little little box of 23 minutes. That seems to be our, our common number. I don't know why, but it is. Okay, real quick. Funny story. Yesterday, I'm walking out of the store, and my son, Nick, goes, Hey, are we doing a mystery box this, this year? And I'm like, well, what do you think? He's like, well, I say no because we had compl complaints last year. We had and I like said, hate, actual hate mail. I said we had one, maybe two guys complain, right? That's what I said, right? You're, you're quiet. I'm quick, 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 quick. Hate mail. Hate mail. So it's funny because yesterday we watched a hockey game, Nick, right? Yeah, we were there. Go Devils. What a team, right? Yeah, they're playing, they're really, playing well. really well. Young team, aggressive team. And... Uh, Two, we, that's two in a row, guys. Just saying, we're coming for you, right? They're coming for you. This is usually the real fault for the bus. <laughs> no, they're gonna win the third game. Then we'll have to come off the bus. But uh, it's all good. I think it's gonna work out in the end. I think we're gonna have a good, solid team, young team, aggressive team, and I, I was. It, it, we've been looking good. Enough hockey talk. A lot of fights, though, right? Yeah. That uh, apparently there's a uh, there's a lot of Seattle Kraken fans out there, right? They're in the, they're in the stands. Yeah. Go Seattle. Yeah, well, whatever. Hey, listen, the the the, uh, the Golden Knights were a fake team too, right? The Knights, what? Yeah, you'll never see that again. The, one and done. Yeah. Okay. Enough hockey talk. So yeah, so so I was like, dude, mystery boxes. We've been doing them for like six, seven years, and guys love them, right? Yeah. And what we basically do, if you're new to YouTube, or you're new to us, what we do is we we get a hundred boxes. We put a fair value of say a hundred dollars in the box. And a couple of them will have a Milwaukee impact in it, a Milwaukee ratchet in it. So some of them are worth three hundred dollars. So like somebody has to get a box that they might not like so much. It might be like we did like this, this guy in particular. I'm talking about. He got a punch and chisel set that we normally sell for sixty dollars. Yeah. And a a, a, a a plier set that we normally sell for like twenty five. So it's like eighty five dollars he got a value, which is I, it's a pretty fair box. You know, he lost a lot more gambling. He's probably lost a lot more gambling, right? He probably bought a lottery ticket or two, and they didn't—they weren't winners, right? At least you got something. But it's—I mean, if, if you possibly think that I can give everybody a hundred Milwaukee sets, I would be out of business the next day, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so I mean, like sometimes you know the risk is greater than the reward. The risk is greater than the reward. But you know, don't think about you losing. How about the young kid? who really could have used that set and he won it. Like karma. Like karma went to the person who, who deserved it. Yeah, I mean, he spent $100 and he got a Milwaukee. A Mo oh, half kit. a Milwaukee kit. That's pretty nice. I mean, that's pretty nice. It's all about the chance to win, but you didn't come out with nothing, you got something. So yeah, so he, this guy was on another page saying, nah, he sucks, he ripped me off, I bought a mystery box, it had like $50 worth of stuff in it. Hey man, I, I can't control the, the prices on the internet. He found a plier for like, for $15, he found the other set for 50 bucks. So in his mind, for $100, he got a $60 set. I mean, like... He could have just not bought it. He could have just not bought it, right? Yeah, and he was like... I mean, like... And, and Somebody had, else would have been grateful to, you know... Yeah, I, I got his name written down. I'm not even going to say his name, but I told him I was going to talk about him today on YouTube. I go, dude, I ain't got the time to talk about this, but it was literally me and my son talked about it that morning, then at the hockey game, this guy chimes on another page, Nick Rose, he's a prick from New Jersey, and he said, I have an uppity attitude. Well, you got that goddamn right. It's not very nice. <laughs> I forget where he was from, but I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. He, but it was so funny. Somebody said, where's a good place to buy Milwaukee tools? And this guy goes, somebody said my, actually a lot of people on the page said my, our name. We're, we're like the farmer's tool dealer, apparently. And I like that. Oh, was it the farmer page? Yeah, the farmer page. It's a good one. And he's like, I wouldn't buy nothing from that prick. And I'm, like, nice. and I'm like, okay, you had a bad experience. I mean, like, in and, and, and the end result, he was nice. And I, and I said to him, I said to him, if you ever, and we went back and forth like 15 times, and I said to him, if you ever need anything, please let me know. Not a, not a purchase, not a sale, but if you ever need maybe a warranty or something like that, please reach out to me and I will still help you, because I'm not a prick from New Jersey, and I'm not uppity. I have some Jersey charm. Okay. Speaking of New Jersey, we had a guy calling yesterday, okay? Maybe, and I'm going to do mystery boxes this year, because I like doing mystery boxes. It's fun, Okay. So we're gonna do them. You, we're gonna do them. Okay. Okay. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun, and it, it, you're you're giving somebody a chance to get something really nice, and some of you may not get something, you know, that, like oh, earth shattering, but you're gonna get a fair value. It's better than nothing. It's better than a goose egg. 
Okay? All right. Enough of that. Speaking of New Jersey, speaking of phone calls, I talked about a, a, a Mac tool dealer do, doing a top five list, and I thought he shanked it. I thought he did a horrible job. But that's just my humble opinion. What the do I know selling tools for 37 years, right? Like the, the other day, I went to the dentist, and I had some work done because my teeth were all banged up. And he said to me, he goes, do you, you have a little gap in your front. Do you want me to close that up? Right? I don't know if you heard the story. Did you hear the story? No, I didn't hear the story. So I said to him, I go, dude, you're the dentist. You make you do what you got to do, right? Yeah. And it's funny because like when I go to a tattoo artist, Nick's been to the tattoo artist numerous times, and the guy goes, well, how do you want me to do it? I'm going to do it like this and that. And what do I say to him? You're the tattoo artist. I go, you're the tattoo artist. You do it the way I think I should do it. I always, and I always do this. My haircut, my barber. I got the best barber in the world. What's his name, Nick? Danny. Danny what? Danny Cuts. Danny Cuts. When I, when I, he says, Danny goes, what are we doing with this hair today? And what do I say to him? Do whatever you want. Let the professional make the choice for you. He's going to make the right choice. As long as you're dealing with a professional. I wouldn't go to some crackhead with a, ta a tattoo artist and say, hey, dude, do what you want. I'll get a unicorn or something like that. Okay? So anyway, this tool dealer, sometimes you got to trust your tool dealer. This guy, I thought, shanked it and gave a lot of bad advice for your first time top five tools because I don't think he was even close. So this guy called us in, called us up because he was the guy that filmed the Mac tool dealer. And he wants to come up here and video us. What'd I say? What did Nick say? Yeah, absolutely. Come on up. Come on up. You want to do top five with the king? Let's go. The godfather of tool industry will not steer you wrong. New mechanic walks on my truck. I will give him the five sets he needs and save him money. I'm not trying to break it off in his ass. I'm not trying to sell him some dusty shit on my shelf that I can't sell to anybody. I'm going to give him solid advice. Why? I'm professional. Even though I can't talk so good this morning. Okay, enough of that, right? Enough of that? I covered Black Friday, covered Mac Eye video. And uh, funny thing is, there's a big craze going on in this world. There's ships parked out in the ocean, the ports are backed up, and there's a supply chain issue going on, right? It's affecting a lot of things. Oh, really? I haven't noticed. <laughs> hey, speaking of, speaking of fun, right? Customer sent this to me. Nick, I know you love your love banging shit on the table. I love banging shit too, but on a table. So I figured I'd give you this gavel. It would, it would fit perfectly. I banged it a couple times myself to make sure the head wasn't going to come flying off. Seeing how made in China, seeing how it's made in China. You sent me a made in China. I didn't even know that. Made in China. Your customer, Cody Riley. Cody Riley. Thank you very much. I love it. I love anything somebody sends me, Nick. Put this on a wall because I never want to forget this guy. He's a good guy. He's very nice of him. It was nice of him. He took his hard-earned money and sent me this. Okay? Nice guy. I'll let you know a secret. I collect a lot of stuff. I do own a gavel, right? Do you? I own two gavels. I own a full-size gavel and I own a mini gavel. Oh. I'll show it to you tonight. But yeah, I, that's awesome. And guys don't like me banging on the table. Maybe they like me. Maybe they like me banging the gavel better. That really hits your ears. This hits your ears. Because you know what? It's a gavel. Marked it up a little bit, but it's okay. Listen, yeah. he gave me a gavel. Cody, thank you, buddy. All right, enough of that. So uh, back to the ships being parked all over the ocean, okay? Parked. Actually, I think they say they're anchored. I would say anchored. You don't park a ship. You, what do you, park you don't park a ship. You, what do you do? Anchor. You anchor We're a ship. You, well, hey, Nick, that's the issue. We can't get them docked, unload them, so we have to do what? Anchor. Anchor. Okay? I'll teach you guys all kinds of shit. I'll teach you about tools, teach you about parking boats or anchoring boats. We're docking boat. There's probably gonna be a boat guy out here that's gonna. Huh? He, oh, <laughs> we're gonna get a boat guy that's gonna tear us apart. These f***ing assholes don't know shit about boats. That's what I say to you. Okay. So anyway, we. I'm not gonna say the product yet because I, I like to get it all done. But it's all in the works. We have, there's a product we sell that's made in China. That we we buy it from another company and sell it. And we, we sold quite a few of them. Don't say what it is. But I. Huh? You, you're going to know in a second when I say this. But we recently got a deal to get a lot of these brought in with our name on them. And where they made? Just say USA. USA? USA. You just said China. The ones we are selling currently are made in China from another company. Oh. Right? Yes. The ones we've just bought, procured, a bunch of them coming in are made where? Oh, USA. And we're going to put our, we're gonna get our name put on them? Yes. And sell them. And they're going to cost how much more, Nick? Like a dollar. A dollar more! And some sucker, and don't beat that, is going to complain about that dollar, right? Yeah, they will. But in the back of his pickup truck, it says Made in America. Buy Made in America, right or wrong? Yeah. And he's, and he's that guy, I only buy Snap-on. And 70% of Snap-on shit's made in China too, right? Oof. 
It's true. Or Korea. If you own a snap-on multimeter, do me a favor. Take the cover off the back. Not the cover. The plastic, the plastic holster off the back, and it'll say made in North Korea. Not North Korea. Made, in, Korea. made in Korea. We don't Probably made North Korea. We really don't have anything here made in North Korea. <laughs> I, I, it was a slip. It says made in Korea. It says made in Korea. It's made in Korea. It says made in Korea. Though, I support, it. Korea. I support it too. But don't jam that made in USA shit down my throat and then give me a Korean <laughs> multimeter, Nick. Well, if it's got a battery and it's made in Korea, he should break your heart. So you're saying you don't you don't think they're they're like to made in USA? They're, no, their lights are definitely not made in the USA. Are you nope. sure? There's you heard it here first, people. There's Nick no. Morello Jr. says that that shit's made in China. Snap-on. I don't believe There's it. I, I, I know everything Snap-on sells is probably made in the USA. Very few lights that are made in the USA. I think Streamlight is actually assembled in the USA. So you can assemble in the USA, Nick. You see these right here? These are the JDT Co. three-piece hose crimping pliers. And where are these, where are these, where are these proudly assembled? Here. In the USA, in Toto, New Jersey, we just got a lot of these in their package here, right? Yeah. And how much, Rodney? Uh, fourteen dollars. Fourteen dollars. Good tourist for my Spanish-speaking friends. And uh, I know there's better ones out there. They're metal and made in America, and we sell those too for fifty-five dollars, right? Fifty-nine. How much? Fifty-nine. Their price went up fifty-nine dollars. So whatever you want, we got. Okay. So anyway. That covers that. Hey, Nick, what's this? Uh, a set of Nipex twin grips with the comfort grip. With the handle. comfort grip. With the comfort grip. Have you sold? Nice. Have you sold any? Uh, yeah, we got like three left. Okay, cool. Four left. How about the other twin grips? Have you sold any of those? A handful. A handful. We have like four of those left. Well, listen. When the next order comes in, we're gonna do this deal right here. Okay. Nipex pliers, vessel screwdrivers, and what are we gonna call it? I don't think we can say that. I'm gonna call it the Axis deal. Main Germany, Main Japan. Okay, you do the math. Open the history book. You know what I'm talking about. The Axis deal. Now look, with an espresso. Now it's, now we got it, it's Italy in there too. Well, you know what? I can call it the Axis deal. You know why? Main Germany, Main Main Japan, sold by an Italian. What? Nothing. Don't bleep any of this. You leave all this shit in, kid. You cut this out. I'm gonna be mad. Okay. I think the caffeine went to me today. I think so. Okay. All right. This whole video is supposed to be talking about what? Air cap? Air tools. Air tools. You know why? I think air tools are making a little bit of a comeback. Do you, what do you think about that? I mean, everything on this table has been selling very well, so. Thank you. And what doesn't this have in it? The microchip. It doesn't have a chip. It doesn't need a chip. Okay? Chipless tools. Okay? I know. Snap makes the best air hammer in the world. So what did AirCAD do? Made their version. Copied it. And I respect that. The price, it's like a quarter of the price. It's a quarter of the price. How much is this? 234. What's this? Wait, how much is this? Two, $234. $234. What's this? The uh, flex head cutoff tool. Not a cutoff tool, it's a flex head cutoff tool. It'll go this way, it'll go that way. Okay? Very nice. And how much is this, bitch? I think 125. 125. Send it. And we got the. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't price this one out. Yeah, this is. This is the. I didn't price. I didn't. I didn't price one out yet. But I'm. I'm sure it's a great deal. This is the reversible one. Goes this way and goes that way. In case you're working in somebody's interior, you don't want to shoot sparks inside. You shoot them outside by your friend. Catch them on fire. Fun at parties too. Okay, we're gonna post this one up. And then my favorite tool is the stubby impact. Half inch drive. If you're a truck mechanic, you need this. And again, I know, I know, cordless tools are fantastic. They're all the rage. But there's a little issue going on in the world. And there's a chip shortage. And these don't have chips, so these are readily available. And look, and this has more. Listen, I don't care whose stubby you buy. Snap on, Mac, Maco, Milwaukee, DeWalt. Who else? Did I forget anybody? Cornhole, I mean, I don't know, Mac, I, I, I don't know, whoever's. This will hit harder. These are 500 pounds of, of torque, I believe. I, I gotta check the box, I don't wanna, I don't wanna misquote it, but your cordless ain't gonna hit, hit like that. Your full size one will, but your little one won't. That thing's nice. What? That thing's nice. Nice? It's a work of art! It's not nice, it's a work of art! And then they got the old ear saw. Finally, finally, somebody did two things. 
Two things with an airsoft, okay? They put a real blade in it that will last you more than 30 seconds. Thank you, Aircat. And they put a real holder in. Not that aluminum piece of shit that breaks within 30 seconds. That's a real one off, off a full-size saw. It's going to last forever. If not, I'm going to cut a motherfucker. <laughs> You'll probably cut, cut the last part out, but I get it. Okay, listen to me. We're at the tool show. I met a good friend of mine. What's his name, Nick? Oh. Matt McKinney. Oh, yeah, yeah. Matt McKinney. Good guy. Good guy. And I bet you he was a party about 30, 40 years ago. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Because he's a party now. All right. And Matt McKinney, he says, and I believe him because I agree. The, what's the biggest problem in the air tool market? I don't know. That's the crickets. Oh, I know what it is. What is it? These guys don't keep these things clean. <laughs> you don't keep them clean. You don't oil it. Your ear tools, your ear supply is shit. Drain your tanks. Use a water separator. Hey guys, call me crazy. Throw a little lube in it, okay? Coming soon. Yeah, I'm, I mean, like, guys, if you're going to be banging, you're going to be using lube. If you're using air tools, use some lube, too. What are you doing? What? Oh. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is real talk. Real talk with Nick Murrell from JDT Co. Oh. Use lube. Lots of it. Lube is cheap. Your tool's not. Either one. Okay. And let me let you in on a little secret, guys. If you have an air tool and you use it, whatever it is, and we're gonna we're gonna we used to sell this in the past. We kind of got away from it. We're gonna start selling it again. This is, you know, blaster like PB blaster air tool conditioner. This shit will set you free. Any air tool you have, I don't care how old or how new it is. You get it? You hit the trigger. Let it sit for 15 minutes. Quince minuto for my Spanish speaking friends. Okay. You know you're gonna get some Neanderthal that says that they used Bray Clean, right? Bray Clean? They're gonna use everything in their mother's ass. But let me tell you so what you should be using is this stuff. So now, 15 minutes later, put the shot clock. 15 minutes later, you're gonna pick this up, put ear to it, and go. You're gonna see the garbage and shit that comes out of here is gonna be black. We did a live test. Do you remember doing that at home? We did it? We don't have ear here. We have ear at our house, and we did it there when we before we got the store. And the black shit that came out of my Ingersoll Rand 231 that I've owned for 30 years was unbelievable. And yes, my impact still works because I take care of it. I give it clean air, lubrication, and I clean it every once in a while with this shit. Okay? Guys, you're getting me a little fired up. So listen, and that's the biggest problem in the air tool industry is that the warranty. But if you take care of your tool and clean it, It'll alleviate most of your warranty issues. Nobody, I said nobody, takes care of their tools. Nobody oils it, nobody gives it clean air, nobody gives it the old uh, once a week blowout. They don't, nobody does. And if you say you do, you're lying. You're lying to me, you're lying to yourself, stop lying. That's easy though, I mean, you know. If it's it's easy, easy, it takes a second. Using, if you're not using the tool for 15 minutes, spray that shit in there, put it down. Done. Yeah. One, two, three. Right? Yeah. Okay. What's that? Okay. What's that? What did it say? What's it saying? Like, what? case closed. Order core. I like that. Order core. I'm going to learn all my phrases. All right, listen to me. I think I covered enough. Real quick, jump on this. I got a few of these left. The 808s. How much are they? Uh, 369. 369. You will find a better price anywhere. And if you do, if you find it cheaper, what is it, Nick? Fake. Fake. Don't buy a fake hotel. Don't buy a fake hotel. The, the real one. Don't buy. I knock. I knock. I knock my espresso over. Hope you weren't enjoying it. I was really enjoying it, but not, I. I guess. I guess not anymore. Okay. Let me see if I. Oh yeah. I'm going to talk about a, a, a sensitive subject in, a, in the, the, the tool dealer's world. Salesmen. All our salesmen. I don't want to say all our salesmen suck because they all don't suck, but. A lot of these suck. And a lot of reasons why we make our own tools, a lot of reasons why we buy direct is because we can't get deals. All you salesmen are getting lazy out there and we're firing you guys one by one, right? Dropping like flies. They're dropping like flies. They're dropping like flies because they can't keep up. 
you working on commission, step your game up. I'll put a f better car in your driveway, kid, right? Oh, yeah. I tell my salesman flat off, I'm like, dude, you do your job, whatever you're driving, we'll put a better car in the driveway next year, I promise you. And they're like, okay, this is awesome. What do they do? Nothing. They do nothing, right? They do nothing. Everybody is lazy. Everybody's phoning it in. Right or wrong? Yeah. It's crazy. I can, listen, I don't have to do any of this shit. Trust me. I can be driving my tool truck, having a good time. But me, I like to push the envelope. I like to grow. Really? I like to grow. I want a better car. I want a better car in my driveway. Okay? I want a better, you want a better car in your driveway? Um, I mean, I, what? I've been what? waiting on my car to be built for like two years now. So I've been, You're waiting, hang on, hang, hang on, newsflash. Wait, Nick, you're waiting for your car to be built for two years now? About that. What does it, what does it need? Everything. It need, it probably needs a chip. Probably. It probably needs a chip. What did you order, Nick? What are you waiting for, Nick? Uh, Bronco. Nick bought a Bronco. Nick's, been, Nick's had his Bronco in order for two years. Since the day they came out. Since the day they came like out. The day after. Where are you buying it from? Uh, our customer, Ken Zook. Ken Zook. If you're, if you're in Pennsylvania you want a Ford, go see Ken Zook. I think Kane, Pennsylvania. Though. Kane, Pennsylvania. Zook Ford. Right? Zook Motors. Zook Motors. He, he's a customer, too. He's a good, good guy. That's why, guys, if it don't need a chip, save a, save a, save a Ford. Buy an air tool. It, it doesn't need a chip. There's no chips in here, right? This is chipless. Why would there be? There's no chip in here. So There's no chip in here. This is chipless. Thing. Chipless. Like my new diet. I don't need, I don't need potato chips because I'm chipless. Okay. What? Well, what else want to talk about? Did I miss anything? I think we covered it all. Did we? I think so. Okay, cool. Uh, listen, here. I, real, real, real quick. This was a big seller. Yeah. A big seller. We sold a couple hundred of these. Yeah. Okay. What was another big seller recently? Thor Impacts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thor Impacts. Oh, yeah. JDT Co. is on the cutting edge of bringing you the newest stuff possible. We sh we have we have sold and shipped almost, I don't want to say 300 of these, but we sold and shipped a lot of these, okay? And Thor Impacts, as many as we can find, we have been shipping. We are the, your go-to company for getting the, the newest stuff to you the fastest. And Nick, I challenge you today to find me the next big deal coming out. What is it going to be? Do you know? Oh, these. You got something? Oh, the yeah. The smaller right. ones, the four inch. They're, they're, coming, out four inch. they're coming out with a four inch, four inch one of these, right? Yeah. Ooh. And let me tell you something. Yesterday, guys, we did a, we did a video. We did a seal. And we did the, uh, hang on. I want to show you. We did the, uh, this is the Nipix four inch, right? Yep. Cobra. With the little, well, our logo on there. Is that dog? Doesn't dog. And the JDT Company Pry Bar. What do we call this? The EDC special. Your everyday carry special. We did a Jasper uh, promotion with it yesterday. How much is this? Uh, 40 bucks. Con amigo. Send it. $40. This is, a, this is a, I'll tell you guys, you put this in your pocket, it'll change your life. You gotta do something fast. Jasper keeps one in his pocket. Jasper keeps one in his pocket at all times. Okay? Am I lying? No. All right. All right. I think I've talked enough because now I have to clean up my mess. You definitely made a mess today. I made a mess. A little and I'm unhinged. I'm trying to be a positive guy. I'm trying to change the industry, Nick. You think it's you think it's, you think it's easy to change the industry? Uh, you think it's easy? I gotta change the I gotta change the industry. I gotta change the world first. All right, listen to me. And this is the reason why I do stuff like this. When people like Cody Riley, who I've never met, I, I probably talked to him maybe on a PM message, right? Probably. Does he buy tools? That name sounds familiar. Then he buys tools. When guys like that get their hard-earned money and send me stuff like this, and send him something, Nick, today, please. Send him a t-shirt, yeah, EDC, something. Send a guy, send a guy something! Okay? Because I like, you, you give to me, I give back. And I like, I like stupid stuff like this. Right? Yeah. Hope this is going to break. I, and some guys don't like the banging, right? They don't like the banging. That thing's loud. That's but like if you don't, but listen. This is, this is Cody's fault. Hey, listen. If you don't like banging, this probably ain't the right channel for you. Probably not. Like Phil Murphy, our, our governor, said. He said, if you don't like taxes, New Jersey's probably not the right state for you. Did he say that, Nick? Did he? You didn't hear the, the commercial? No, you can't say that. He said that. He says, if you don't like taxes, New, Jersey, New Jersey's probably not the state for you. Well, That's what he said. We're going to be like... So if you don't, if you don't like banging... This, this oh, shit, I think I broke my hammer. I, what the heck did that happen? Uh, Cody, I, we, I have a problem here, Cody. 
we, we're, we're losing we're losing we're losing pieces of our hammer all right listen to me it, it's neither here or there thank you for the hammer even though it didn't last one show it's all good I right, listen like we always say here cover the price stay for the show peace <laughs>